In the gospel reading today, when St. Peter asks our Lord, if we have left everything to follow you, what are we going to have? And essentially, if you think about what our Lord is telling him, you're going to have everything. We've left everything to follow you, and in return, we're going to receive everything, literally, because God is all in all. And as it sums it up very simply in Scripture, it just simply says after that, God is all, period. Now, for those who are not called, obviously, to the monastic kind of life, they're not being asked to give up everything in the way of the world. And yet at the same time, we're all being asked to do the same thing, and that's to focus on God, to serve the Lord. It's going to be done, obviously, in a different way. The monks and the nuns have a certain way of being able to do that and the way that their life is laid out. But people in a marriage also have to serve the Lord. It doesn't look the same, doesn't even look close to the same. And yet at the same time, when we say that, we always have to remember that the grass is always greener on the other side. Married people always seem to think that the religious have it so easy and it's just so wonderful and their life is so ordered and everything is quiet and they can focus on the Lord. And then the religious think that married married people have it so easy because there's somebody there who loves them and cares for them and takes care of them and blah, blah, blah. It's like, would you just focus on your own vocation and serve the Lord? Don't worry about what everybody else has. Because you know what? If we're really going to live married life according to the way of Christ, in essence, we're giving up everything to do it. Because you're giving up your life and giving that life to another person. And then when you have children, you give up your life over and over and over again for others. And so it is, in that way, a similar thing. But how easy it is It doesn't matter what the state in life is, to live our lives selfishly, to live our lives not for the Lord, but for other things. And that can be again in any state in life. And that's what we all have to guard ourselves against, and how careful we have to be to make sure that we are keeping our focus where it belongs. That is on the Lord. And it may be that because we weren't among the 12 apostles, therefore we aren't going to be receiving the 12 thrones upon which we are going to sit in judgment over the, over the, the, the 12 tribes of Israel. It doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is heaven, is life everlasting, is being with Jesus. That's what matters. And so, in some ways, you could look at it and say, well, but don't the religious have it easier because they give up everything, so there are no attachments that are in the way. In some ways, that's maybe true. But then you can look at it and say, but don't married people have it easier? Their whole life requires saintly virtue. It requires that dying to self, which a religious can so easily give into, because he or she is alone. The focus can easily be on the self. The married person tries to do that, especially when they have little kids. Good luck. Your kids are gonna let you know that you better stop thinking about yourself and start thinking about them. Everything in marriage is designed to make you a saint. Everything in religious life is designed to make you a saint, just in a different way. So it's a matter then of striving to live the duties of our state in life to the best of our ability, in the way that God wants that to be lived out in our day-to-day life. That way, even if we don't say specifically we've given up everything, Because if you're called to be married, you're not called to give up everything. You have to have things to be able to care for your family. But at the same time, in married life, it's something we have to be very careful of, that we don't get caught up in the materialism. 
in the judging of others, in, in the comparison, the competition to be like everyone else. In religious life, they have to be very careful not to get self-focused because their whole life is supposed to be focused on God and how often it is not. And so that's the same for anybody, something all of us can look at. So when we hear things like what St. Peter is saying, yeah, they literally left everything and they followed the Lord. Each one of us is called to, li live, to leave everything in the sense of leaving the self behind, living our lives for God and for others. And if that's what you're doing, not living your life for the money, not living your life for material things, not living your life for worldly pleasures or power or whatever it is, but you're living your life for the Lord. You're living your life for those whom God has put into your life, that it's a life of service. Then you are growing to be a saint. That's what God is asking of anybody, no matter what the state in life might be. And so don't compare to anybody else. Just look at the Lord. And when we can honestly look at him and ask, okay, I've given up everything. I've let go, I'm detached. I've given it all. What is there? He's gonna say to you the exact same thing that he said to Peter. Not about the 12, the 12 thrones, but rather, Whoever's left all this will receive a hundredfold and will possess life everlasting.